Hurdy-gurdies are notoriously difficult to capture in sampled form, and not necessarily because it's hard to stick them in front of a mic and get a decent sound out, but rather to capture the nuanced quirks that come with the hurdy-gurdy, the sheer mechanical ingenuity of the instrument, how they function, the way the crank system works, where you turn a crank, all the strings turn into drone strings. But then you have chanters or melody strings where you can play melodies, and if you let go of that melody note, it returns back to its original droning state. All of these functions make it incredibly hard to bottle up into something that is scripted into a software version of the instrument. That's what the Gurdy is trying to solve for here. We have every string on offer, individually available at any point. You simply start the crank going, and then you can engage or disengage any string. The drone will start. If you play a melody, the drone will stop. The melody will play. As soon as you let go of that melody note, immediately and adaptively, it will snap back to its original drone as well as a whole host of other functionalities here. We've got the uh, buzzing bridge or the dog buzz, which is a really classic, iconic Gurdy sound, which we can link entirely to aftertouch within this instrument. It's super powerful. There's some really beautiful articulations on offer. Let's get stuck into the overall interface. So looking at the interface, it looks very much like a standard Insanity Samples interface it does these days, but there is some additional functionality just within the performance view straight out of the bat. And most importantly is the string controls section. So this section here, we have five string controls for every string of the instrument, from the trumpet to the mouche to the chanters, one and two, and the bourdon. The chanters are our melody strings. It's what we can play notes on. All the others just drone. We have drop down menus to choose the drone pitch of that specific string, including the melody strings, the chanters. We can choose their bass drone level and then everything else we play above that. Then we go through to a volume control for every single string. We also have additional panning here at the string level, just so you can create a little bit of separation between the strings if you want to. They pan them all to the center if you kind of just want to give that homogenous sound of it all coming from one place. We have a very subtle amount of panning happening just in the box. Then we go through to the power buttons. Now these are important because these will engage and disengage the strings. They will turn them on and off, but they're fully adaptive to when you're actually playing the instrument. So you can keep the crank held down, which is C1. It's the most important key of this instrument. And then you can turn on a string and it will begin droning straight away. We can link this to key switches, and indeed we have. We have a drop down here, you can put it to any key you want to, though we have it set up as ergonomically as possible and as close to the droning C note as possible. So C1 is our crank note, and then below that from E through to the B are all of our strings. And if we press lightly, we'll turn a string on. If we press hard, will turn a string off. And that's the basic functionality of getting a string on and off. So if we turn all the strings off now, I'll press hard on the chanter and board on, which is G and B. And then I can press uh, the crank and nothing will happen. We don't hear anything. Whereas if I now engage the board on string, we get that lowest drone. I can keep that drone going and then add in the chanter. And I can keep going much in that fashion. I can turn strings on and off totally on the fly. Or I can bring it right back to one again, just again on the fly in the middle of a performance, all captured in real time with key switching. You would have heard there when I turned the trumpet on, let's turn those strings off and get the trumpet on by itself. This is our buzzing bridge string. So this is a drone string here set to a D, and this string is unique. It has a special bridge on it that is uh, slightly detached from the body, uh, but when you play the string hard enough, you'll get that bridge to vibrate enough that it starts to just wiggle on the body and create a buzzing sound, wood on wood kind of buzzing sound. Now this has a threshold naturally in the real world where you can turn a crank and tighten the bridge to make it constantly buzzing or make it very easy to buzz or make it very hard to buzz. So we've created a dog threshold here that allows you to do exactly the same thing. If you have this very low, the buzz will just always be present. If you have it really high, you won't hear the buzz until you get past the threshold. And that's a really iconic sound of the Gurdy. If we get the other strings involved here as well. It 
is quite a key part of the sound of the Gurdy. I'm using this with Aftertouch. We have a special button here that we can click on and off that turns on Aftertouch. The beauty of using that is when you play the melody and you play that hard and you get into that buzzing range, you'll start catching just very quick little buzzes and that's a really crucial part of the sound as well because what tends to happen with that buzz is it follows kind of the melodic rhythmic pattern that you're playing and just naturally kind of sporadically buzzes as you play as well as you being able to control it with the crank and how fast you're spinning the crank. So you can have this turn off and you can use the mod wheel for example or any CC of your choosing uh, to get that buzz and draw in a really specific kind of 16th note buzz pattern if you want. Though you can just turn on after touch and kind of let the instrument uh, play with you. So I'll leave that on for now. Final little part on this uh, string controls section is the addition of a uh, key switch on C sharp one. When pressed will change from clockwise to anti-clockwise. That's the direction the crank is moving. You then need to re-engage the crank just like you would in real life. So you need to let go and re-press C1 to get that reverse functionality. Not used that often. For the most part, the crank kind of just moves forward if you're playing a uh, melodic phrase or if you're just keeping a drone going. It tends to just be clockwise the whole time. Though every now and then it is uh, useful to pull uh, in reverse and get that different uh, timbre to the strings. So here we are. Uh, uh, just standard. Let's turn the trumpet off. Now I'm going to engage C sharp one and play again. That's now a backwards bow. So we can. If we wish. Though 99% of the time you'll just use this in forward motion. That's how these are generally used. Okay, on to the key switching element of this instrument. There are three main categories with this instrument. There's drones, staccatos, and tremolo. Drones is, again, our 99% use case scenario. This is where you're gonna spend most of your time. This is really the heart of the sound of the Gurdy. The others are just things that you can't really recreate without them having sampled, um, but also a very, unlikely uh, use case scenario. So in drones, you get access to static longs. Uh, let's go through these as key switches. And I'll turn just the chanter one on. Beautiful, real. Uh, classic sound of the Gurdy there. Then we get to the live vibrato. Now this is uh, captured live for a very good reason. We could add this in at the scripting level, of course, but with a Gurdy, there's so much mechanical and uh, physical uh, involvement with making a vibrato work on the notes that it was really worth capturing. <laughs> so good you can hear so much of the mechanical detail of the instrument it's really beautiful uh, stutter longs is a bit of a curveball it's a sound where you can kind of have the note half engaged half unengaged and uh, kind of uh chaotically and esoterically kind of bouncing around on the note to create this very jarring um uh, broken sound <laughs> I love that, it's so full of character. And again, using that sparsely on just the occasional note to really bring in this additional texture is just a fantastic way to really make this thing feel uh, like it has a beating heart. Now the turns are incredibly powerful. This is a really heavily used function within playing a Gurdy. This is where you're triggering a note in real life and then you're basically playing a turn where you're going up and down and then back to the original note you triggered. Uh, this can be in semitones or whole tones. And what we've done is build this into our scale link functionality that makes it fully adaptive to the scale you're playing in, which of course can also be overridden at any point with the temporal override key switches. If you want to lock it to just semitones or just whole tones or any variation, you can. Though if you use a key, so say you're playing in G, um, you might want to use the C major because then that creates a kind of mixolydian sound. And um, when I turn the crank here, you'll hear what that sounds like. <laughs> Ooh, 
really beautiful. Again, used in the context of the overall performance, you can really get some nuanced playing here. So let's take a look at how our performance modes are structured. We have a nice simple one on performance mode one where the vast majority is static longs, then a little bit of live vibrato and a little bit of turns at the very top. This is very user friendly and functional. When you're dealing with a lot of thought anyway with changing strings and using the aftertouch, and um, being able to just kind of tap into something interesting at the very top of the velocity spectrum whilst playing uh, softly to get the general sound of the instrument, this is a very good way to go. Slightly more complicated one on performance mode two, uh, where we get these stutters at the very low part and we get the live vibratos taking more of the uh, kind of core of the velocity spectrum when you're playing. Uh, you can of course just build your own and do whatever you want to do, uh, but these performance modes are just there to help you along on your way to get a decent sound straight out of the bat. <laughs> Okay, so then we have uh, a staccato engine, and this is very, very simplistic. It's just the, the sound of the crank being moved very short and sharp, forwards and then anti-clockwise, clockwise, anti-clockwise, and it just repeats like that in a very simple way. Same crank button of C1. And if you hold down a melody note, that will become part of the uh, crank system as well. Very, very useful. Simple and something that you probably won't use that often, to be honest, but it's very nice having it there. Uh, then we head through to tremolos, which again, very simple controls here. It's just the sound of the crank being constantly shook uh, clockwise and anti-clockwise in a very sporadic way. <laughs> You may ask why these things have been separated from the core droning and it's simply because ultimately when you're playing this instrument in this continual elongated way uh, you need to be able to have all the strings just running constantly if this had tremolos and staccatos in it it would affect the melody strings and nothing else that just wouldn't work so really they're like three separate instruments they're like three separate versions of the instrument um, all being able to be used in tandem but you need all of the strings to switch gears at the same time all the strings need to become staccato all the strings need to become tremolo whereas the uh, drones articulations uh, can be on just the melody strings whilst all the rest are droning that's why they're kind of three separate engines if you will that you can switch very quickly between them using key switches so we can go from that sound <laughs> and catch it that way if you want to uh, using some key switches, but the vast majority of the time you'll be in the drone window, I'm sure. Okay, then heading through to uh, the more kind of commonly seen things on our instruments, we have a mixer page where there's a condenser, a large diaphragm, then a, a small um, pencil uh, condenser, and then a dynamic. Uh, they're the microphones used to capture this instrument. A nice even balance of these things gives you a big, nice, beautiful, wide, rich sound that you're hearing now. Super important element of this instrument is the sound of the keys being pressed and let go. It's amazing how much of the sound these keys actually add to the sound of the gurdy. They're so important. They really make the instrument sound like a gurdy. And it's something that's quite subliminal. You don't really notice you're hearing it, but any gurdy uh, recording you've ever heard is absolutely littered with the sound of the keys being pressed. It's a really core sound of the instrument. So we've put this front and center nice and loud. You can dial this in and out to taste, of course, but really nice and high is actually where it's at here. You want that mechanical sound. Uh, we can hear what these sound like in isolation and you'll hear that it's not just the sound of a key being pressed, it creates tonal pitches as it kind of pinches the strings. So I've turned all the strings off, meaning we won't hear anything. And now if I play in the melody range, we'll hear the uh, keys. And that's happening whilst you're playing notes as well in the uh, drone string. So if I put this chanter back on, we'll hear that. Uh, 
is such a crucial part of the sound. It really gives it that final push to sound just like a beautiful, real, authentic, hurdy-gurdy instrument. Okay, let's head through to the effects page. Standard effects, stereo delay reverb with some convolutions on offer here. And then finally an EQ if required just to kind of tweak the instrument within uh, the main window of the instrument without having to use your own external ones if you want to. Okay, that's been an in-depth look at the Gurdy, the Hurdy Gurdy Will Fiddle. Uh, we strongly believe this is the most feature rich and complicated nuanced Hurdy Gurdy library on the market. We can't wait to hear what you do with it. Head to insanitysamples.com to find out more information and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.